Well, good evening. Good evening. Welcome good evening. to Lord of Life and those who are watching the video. Welcome to Lord of Life Lutheran Church here on St. Simons. Um, I know I have one announcement today tonight, and and uh, and I'll do another one during the announcements part. But Kirby is our organist for tonight. Um, he's been training for months. So. <laughs> My day for you. It, it should, and he's ready. So. And Mary Monroe also talked to me, so she's literally in upstate New York, so um, she and her children are going, the author of Sleepy Hollow, um, anyway, that's where they're at, where Sleepy Hollow was seen by the author, so they're having a good time, apparently, so that's good, and she probably deserves having a good time with family and getting away from COVID and all this for a moment or two. Um, the other thing I forgot to ask, um, are there any other names that we need to include of the list of the saints um, that you would like to include this evening? So someone who, a family or member or friend who has passed this last year, um, so that we can include them as we share those names during the prayer. Okay, if not, then I invite you to stand, and we will continue our worship with our call to worship. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy, and the God of all consolation, who comforts us in all our sorrows. So that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. Amen. Amen. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death. So that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. We worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We sing our opening hymn.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray our prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you on earth, who now rest from their labors. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in life of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joy you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, by your death, you took away the sting of death. Strengthen us to follow in faith where you have led the way, that we may at length fall asleep in you and wake in your likeness. To you, the author and giver of life, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. first reading is from the seventh chapter of Revelation. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples, and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. <clears throat> they cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and glory and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord in the answer and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was served by the Lord, and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be in The second reading is from 1 John chapter 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is, is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. 
What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do now is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel as you are able. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to the Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. So for our sermon prayer this evening, I'm going to do it a little bit different, but sit back in your church pews so that you can breathe comfortably in and out and so we start by just breathing nice calm full breaths in exhaling full breaths out don't force it just let it come and as we breathe in and out allowing ourselves to be present here right here right now with God Breathing in, breathing out. Feeling ourselves be opened and expanded to God's presence in our lives. Breathing in, breathing out. This time as you breathe God's presence deep into you, I want you to think about and remember those people in your life those saints in your life who taught you important ways of faith, who touched you with love and grace, who showed you how faith can be, how faith can work, and then live that faith before you. Whoever they might be, whether Christian or not, they were children of God who taught you faith. And give thanks to God for them. And as you breathe out this time, send that thanks out into the, to God's world and let them know your gratefulness for their presence in your life. And so we breathe in and we breathe out. This time as you breathe in, Think of those people you know in your life now who share ways of faith with you, ways of getting through this craziness of life with grace and hope. This change that has happened because of COVID-19, people who help you know that God is here. And thank yourself, too, for knowing God is here. And as you breathe out, breathe out your thanks and grace. And breathe in, breathe out. And this last time, 
as you breathe in, know that you are one of God's saints. Saint is, saint, saintliness is not reserved for after death. Paul always wrote his letters to the saints. And you are saints in this church sharing the grace and presence of God. Give God thanks for your presence with you. And as you exhale this time, send that thanksgiving out to everyone else in the whole world, all of God's creatures and beings and children for their saintliness and sainthood in your life as well. We breathe in, we breathe out. We breathe in. Dear friends of Christ, grace to you and peace. This, I guess some said it was fog outside, so fog and rainy evening. Happy Halloween, too. So, or All Hallowed Eve, we should say it that way. So this night that Luther, um, or was it the first day of, that he nailed the 95 Theses on the church door and began this whole mess that became, for us, being a Lutheran Christian. But as I begin, I want to share with you a poem from um, St. Francis. Oh, and that's not St. Francis. St. Thomas Aquinas. It's called, We Are Fields Before Each Other. How is it they live for eons in such harmony, the billions of stars? When most men can barely go a minute without declaring war in their mind against someone they know. There are wars where no one marches with a flag, though that does not keep casualties from mounting. Our hearts irrigate this earth. We are fields before each other. How can we live in harmony? First, we need to know we are all madly in love with the same God. I have a friend um, who has, has been okayed for ordination. She's a candidate in the Lutheran Church. Now she's been assigned to Western North Dakota, so they won't be interviewing her but here. So, um, and uh, her internship was in a church that whereas I mean, she goes to St. John's Lutheran in in. In, on Ponce de Leon in Atlanta, which is a very progressive church. And she's working with a lot of people who often took offense just on saying the wrong word during a prayer. But she had a very good attitude about it. And of course, it was only internship. You go on internship to learn, to learn how to be a pastor, to learn how to work with people, to learn how to um, live as a child of God. And she, she, she said that, I always... I'm able so far to look at everybody that we are all united in Jesus Christ. That we are all united in Jesus Christ because of God's love for us. And I think that's one of the things that we forget. That no matter what our religious persuasion or our political persuasion, I, you know, that's one of those things that you should never have conversations with friends in at dinner time unless you know very carefully where they stand, etc., etc. Um... But the thing is that before that ever happens, we are united together in Christ. We belong to each other as children of God. And we forget that all the time because as people, we're used to having, as the poems, we're so used to having enemies. You know, we're ready to make someone an enemy in our head before we even meet them. Um, and our gospel today, which is from the Matthew, Matthew 5, and chapters 5, 6, and 7 of Matthew are considered Jesus' conversation or his teaching about how to be a disciple of Jesus. And um, for those of us who are on the Matthew class, it was, I learned all sorts of things. 
but we were able to kind of explore this and take more time. And as I was looking at it in preparation for today, I saw another pattern that I hadn't seen when we, when we looked at it in class. So when you go through the Beatitudes, and this is at the very beginning of this treatise on being a disciple of Christ. So Jesus starts speaking to the crowd. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And one of the ways you can look at it, it says no matter how much you may yearn for God or think that you don't understand how to pray or you don't have enough spirit of God or maybe even you, are, you, you don't even comprehend how to even know God. Blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So right there is an inclusion for every one of us in the room tonight doesn't matter how good a theological mind we have or how much we pray or if we can't even we're, we're afraid to even think about God you know blessed are the poor in spirit we all belong and then blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted or blessed are those who those who grieve we you know as human beings in so many ways we are born into grief we are born into loss you know, people lose parents, people lose children, people lose siblings, and the grief, and in this, this time, it's like we have grief because everything is topsy-turvy, and we have to deal with all these precautions all the time, and it's not stopping. We have grief. Life has not gone back to normal. Blessed are those who mourn, Jesus says, for they will be comforted remind us that whatever we are doing, whatever we are feeling, that God is there walking beside us. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Basically saying, and you can look at meek as, you know, terrified of being seen or known or heard or hurt. You can also look at it as people who know where their place is. They don't want to, you know, step outside of that. But in a sense, who belongs? We all belong. And blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they'll be filled. And I don't know if this is part of the next part, or it's kind of a both end, because when you see something's wrong and you want it to be set right, you know, Jesus says you will be filled. And whether that is an action or a yearning, it's kind of a both end. But the first three for sure are saying who belongs as a disciple of Christ? Well, if we can't figure out which one of us doesn't fit in, I think we all fit into this. And then as we sit and we allow ourselves to be comfortable with the presence of God in the midst of our life as it is, Whatever it is, with all its ups and downs, with its joys and its sadness, with its times of absolute grace and times of absolute sadness, um, we belong. We are children of God. And then the rest of it is kind of like, well, this is what you can do. With that behind you and under you, strengthening you. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, to go out and and do things to change the world for a better place. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Being people of, of reconciliation, being people of caring and concern for those who need care and concern. Blessed are the pure in heart, for in your purity, people are attracted. And know, oh, this is a person of God. Or however you interpret that. Simple grace. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. This, is, this doesn't get quoted much, I don't think. But to be a peacemaker in this world, whatever that is, whether it's between friends or literally internationally, all the ranges of it, it's a person 
who brings people together that wouldn't come together, who brings reconciliation and grace and lives forgiveness and teaches forgiveness because that's what brings peace. Peace is, is a lot of hard work and to do it you have to be and know that you are in, that God loves you. And then the rest is just a reminder that whatever happens to you because you are living God's grace, whatever befalls you when you are unsure and all that, how much you maybe feel that you are being hurt, you are loved and God's love will never stop. And whether you want to talk about a great reward in heaven, it begins now and does not end. It does not end. <coughs> so to, tonight we, we're really kind of doing two things. We're talking about the saints, those people in our lives, those people that we have known, who have taught us, who have loved us, who have shared and taught us how to live faithfully. Even if it's just a ministerial thing, we kind of know who those people are. But it's also about us. As I said in the prayer, Paul, when he wrote his letters, he said to the saints of Ephesus. He's talking about the, the church members of Ephesus. To the church members, the saints of Lord of Life, Lutheran Church. You know, live your faith. That is how, that is part of our everyday sainthood. It doesn't make us any better or any worse, but it's a reminder that that we cannot live separately from God. We cannot. And yes, it's much easier to look at those who have gone before us because we make all sorts of, I make all sorts of mistakes. I don't know about you, you know, so we're going to go with that. <laughs> we make all sorts of mistakes. Our, our perfection in some, kind of, in some ways is, is centered in imperfection. But it's because as a community of faith that we can make it happen. And we can let that grace be known and seen. Not any one individual, but all of us together. So saints of God, um, if you read Matthew 5, 1 through 12, it's kind of given us our marching orders to live as God's children in a world that needs to see and know God's grace. And the verse that's not in it, it's, it's, you know, it's, you all remember this probably, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt has left it, lost its saltness, it should be thrown away. But you can think of it a different way. If, if you're not salty anymore, you're not flavoring the world with faith. You're not sharing the world, sharing with everyone you meet with that kind of energy of God that brings more flavor to life. So be salty, people. Be salty. Not just sweaty, but salty, okay? There's a difference.